The Glitch Attraction is one of the best and most popular Final Fantasy Freddy's fan games, but while trying to load it up, my headset broke and now I can't hear anything. So that raises the question, is it possible to beat the Glitch Attraction without sound? Now before we get started, a couple of rules. Rule number one, you have to subscribe. Rule number two, I'm not allowed to listen to any sound from the game or use any audio visualizers to tell when sound is playing. Now, I streamed this challenge over two days, and each day was a little bit different. Day one has game audio, but my headphones were off so I couldn't hear anything. And day two, I was wearing headphones because I was in VC with one of my friends when running attempts. Because as you will see, this wasn't easy. Although, they didn't help me since they couldn't hear any sound either. I had my game muted, both in windowed mode and the game itself. So for anyone who says I cheated, there you go, there's your proof. So with that out of the way, let's get into the video. Now a quick explanation of what we need to do to beat the Glitz Attraction. We have 6 main levels based on an escape room theme, and we need to beat all 6 to complete the game. Each level is based off a game in the franchise and has different threats, goals and challenges along the road. So let's start with level 1, also known as Nightmares. The first level is based off the FNAF 4 location, where we need to solve a Freddy puzzle in order to get a code that unlocks a safe containing a hammer, allowing us to escape. In this level, as with every single level, there are a number of threats that we have to deal with. Nightmare Balloon Boy is the easiest because he is completely visual. As he starts to wake up from his chair, just flash him to reset him. Nightmare Fredbear is much the same, completely visual. He will appear at the window and you need to shut the curtain in order to scare him off. There's a small audio cue to let you know when he's gone, but he usually leaves after 3-5 to five seconds, so there's nothing really to worry about here. Nightmare Eon is a bit tricky without sound. He will appear from the wall behind the bed, pulling his tentacles through and making a sound when he does this. Simply enter the Golden Freddy suit until he leaves. This one is harder since there isn't the reinforcement of the audio, but he's still fine. The Freddles, however, are the real issue. They are visual, but the audio matters way more. Letting them go too long makes your screen flash, causing hallucinations that if left for too long, you either die of insanity, or something else will get you. So with that being said, Nightmares is probably the easiest level in this challenge, and nothing really changes from playing it without sound. The only really difficulty came from finding the Freddles, since I couldn't hear where they were. But even still, I beat this level on my first try. The second level is based off the Fire to Freddy's 2 location, and this is where the difficulty really shot up, as we now have two characters which are entirely reliant on sound, that being Mangle and Withered Freddy. Let's start by talking about the character whose sound doesn't really affect the entire level, Toy Chica. Toy Chica will walk around the map and when she spots the player, she will run at them for a bit unless she forgets, and then she will sucker punch you. Mangle is our first real challenge. Mangle will pop out from one of the various vents around the map, and you have to avoid letting Mangle see you or you get munched. The way that you tell they're about to pop out of a vent is by listening to a sound cue, which obviously we can't do. So because of that, we are basically going to need to look out for any lights in the distance and pray that Mangle doesn't fall on us. This level is split into two parts. Part 1 is with Toy Chica and Mangle, where you need to find 6 sticky notes which each show a symbol and then a number, which spells out a code you can put into a keypad. Getting this code allows you to get a checkpoint, which is where the much harder part of the challenge comes in. In this section, we need to find a bunch of gears and insert them into this mechanism to pull a lever and escape. This seems easy enough until we meet our first big challenge of the run, Withered Freddy. Withered Freddy in the Glitz Attraction works a lot like the puppet in Fire to Freddy's 2, where you need to wind his music box up in order to keep him happy. You can tell how much progress Freddy has on his music box by listening to the pitch in which his music box tune is playing. However, obviously we can't hear the pitch, so we will never know what stage Freddy is at. So we should just keep winding it every chance we get, right? Wrong. Because one thing that is different about Freddy, compared to the puppet, is that you can actually overwind Freddy's music box. Doing this causes him to break out. Whether he breaks out from you overwinding, or by you letting the box run out, Freddy will then guard the room you need to put the gears in, and basically end your game. In earlier versions of the game, you could actually sneak past Freddy, but that's been patched. So what's the strategy here? Well, I wasn't so sure. The biggest problem with this challenge was actually Toy Chica. Because of all the gears scattered around the room, 
I would need to walk behind Toy Chica's fat ass in order to get the gears on the other side of the room. However, this did two things. One, it made it very difficult to reach Withered Freddy at all, and two, it made it more likely that Mangle would jump me since I wasn't constantly moving. So, while it wasn't set in stone, the strategy was kinda like this. Scan the opposite side of the room for any gears, grab them, and place them near Freddy for easy access. Once I was sure I grabbed them all, I would start to work my way to the opposite room until I made it to the gear room. Place all the gears and pray I wound Freddy enough and that Mangle wouldn't jump on me since the room with the gears is a place that the Mangle can actually drop down from. So with all this considered, how was I going? It's not amazing actually. This challenge was really starting to get to me. Toy Chica was really annoying me since I realized I couldn't even hear her run up to me. But eventually, after dozens of attempts, I did manage to beat this. I will be completely honest, there are not really many sound effects in this level that affect the gameplay. The only sound that really matters is character footsteps, but let's explain the level first. So to beat this level, you need to insert a code into the data pad to get a coin, which you can use to play an arcade game, finish the game to get a code, and finish the level. This level is probably the most straightforward and honestly the easiest besides level 1. There's only two characters that can kill you, Dreadbear and Springtrap. There are two phantoms, but they are not really an issue at all, so I won't even mention them. Dreadbear is the easier of the two to deal with. You need to watch the cameras to see which side he's going to attack from, and hide under the main desk before he enters to avoid him. Just make sure the door isn't closed, otherwise he will completely destroy the door. However, he's a minor inconvenience compared to the real challenge of this level, Springtrap. Springtrap's main difficulty comes from the vast amount of angles he can attack from. He can also enter the three vents, and you need to tell which one of him he is going down, so you can either close the door, or if he's entering the office, you need to turn off all the lights and hide under the desk until Springtrap leaves. Which is probably the hardest thing to deal with, since you can't hear Springtrap either climb through the vent, or actually leave the room. But honestly, this level wasn't that bad, just a little scary. And with that, we get the dub, and move on to literal hell. Fun Times is probably the easiest level in the entire game, usually. However, without sound, this level is actually hell. Pretty much every single character in this level completely relies on sound. But before I explain why this level is so difficult, let's discuss what you actually need to do to beat it. So this level is basically a build a circus baby level, where you need to grab certain parts of baby and fuse them to the body, complete all the fusing puzzles and you win. Now for the hard part, dealing with the animatronics. Starting with the literal easiest character of this level, Funtime Freddy. To be honest, this character is very rarely an issue. You basically just need to double check that he hasn't moved from his stage, which once you hit him once, he basically never moves. But now, for the two most infuriating and irritating characters in this entire challenge, Funtime Foxy and Ballora. Starting with Funtime Foxy, the way you Funtime Foxy works is that from time to time, they will start corrupting, and you need to shock them with the shotgun. And the way that you can tell they're corrupting is by listening for a wubbing sound effect, which obviously you can't hear. However, you can still see Funtime Foxy by using the light, but you have to be careful to either not wait too long, or shock them when they aren't corrupting, or there's a high chance that you will die. However, the biggest problem with this entire section is easily Ballora. The way Ballora works is super annoying for this challenge. Basically, throughout the entire level, you need to listen out for Ballora's music box and shock the appropriate entryway. However, there are two problems. One, the obvious issue of not being able to hear Ballora at all, and two, she's behind you. So you very rarely will get to see Ballora, which if you could, may be able to help. Although you do have to sprint to the door and not miss to barely get her. So basically, the only way you can beat this level is if Ballora and Funtime Foxy never move. So, did I manage to beat it? Well, you can't get... See? Maybe she's there. What the fuck am I just... Can't get me. You can't get me. 
Uh, let's come back to this level later, since the other two levels are definitely going to be possible. So stay to the end to see if we manage to beat this. <laughs> Lost Media is probably the hardest level in the Glitz Attraction, even though you only have one animatronic to deal with, that being Enid. Enid is pretty basic, he just wanders around the map and attacks you if he sees you. While you can hear him running and hear him actually seeing you, it doesn't really make a difference. So basically this entire level is just running around and solving puzzles while trying not to get spotted by Enid. To be completely honest, this level was just a bunch of trial and error and honestly wasn't really interesting enough to talk about. It just required a bunch of luck and a bit of careful planning than usual. So without further ado, let's move on to the final level. Once again, the back alley doesn't really have anything that makes the level harder without sound, although it's way more interesting to talk about compared to the previous level. So let's talk about it. So to beat this level, you need to solve a matchmaking puzzle and complete a pizza sim minigame to unlock a room with a projector and a coin. Using the coin, you can grab pieces of a poster from the Rockstar Freddy animatronic and assemble the poster to unlock a room of pliers which you can use to finally escape. So now we have the final three animatronics we have to deal with for this challenge. The first of these is Scrap Trap. I always come back. Scrap Trap will slowly set up from his desk and you need to close the door and use the call function to send him back to his desk when he stands up. Without sound, the only really tricky part is you can't hear him stop banging on the door. But like Nightmare Fredbear at the start, he's really not that bad. Scrap Baby will come from the forest and you need to use the repel function to send her back. Though you can just leave this function on until Scrap Trap moves for an easier time of dealing with her. Molten Freddy is easily the hardest part of this entire level. He will crawl through the vents and you need to flash him with the light to push him back. He's so aggressive and because we can't hear him crawling through the vents, the only way you can tell which side he's on is to look down the vent he's in. But in total, this level wasn't actually that bad at all and I managed to beat this level after a few tries and actually finish the game. Also, the ending cutscenes are really funny about sound. Fredbear. Didn't I Bless do you. it for you? <laughs> he does look like that. Bro, rejet. Like ASMR. Listening... What? What? That's crazy. Never ever heard that. So, with that all out of the way, there's one more obstacle to deal with, and that is the sister location level. Is it possible? Well, maybe. I couldn't beat this level because one, I'm colorblind, so the last puzzles would be too slow, and secondly, I suck. But I challenge you guys to try and beat this level without sound, and if you can, can complete it, I would love to see it. But anyways, there we go, the glitch attraction without sound. Also, be sure to subscribe to catch my massive ranking video coming out on the 11th of November, where I rank every single Final to Freddy's character, along with 50 other massive FNAF YouTubers. And trust me, you don't want to miss it. But anyways, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.